Weirdest rules in the world that apparently will blow our minds. Wow. Mm. Are they going to be like old rules or current rules? If they're current rules, I'm interested. I'm interested. Who knows? A mix of both, you reckon? Yeah, it could be, you know. Let's find out. Hello, everyone. If you're planning a trip to a country you've never been to before, it's a good idea to study local laws before that. Yes, mm. the basic rules are the same all over the world. You can't take things that aren't yours. You can't fool other people. You can't fight. You can't hurt animals. But certain laws established in certain countries may seem strange, if not absurd. <laughs> 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 Most of the time, each of these interdictions has its own history, but this doesn't make them any less surprising. So, what exactly can't be done in some parts of our planet? Oh. We're going to find out. Oh, Let's get it on. on. That was a long intro. Let's get it on. Dying. What? 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 Isn't there something about dying in the Houses of Parliament as well? Yes, there is. There is. It's illegal. To they have to, like, move you somewhere else before they pronounce you dead or something. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. I was going to say, what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. Now what? The city of Longyearbyen is located in the polar archipelago of Svalbard in the Ooh, Arctic Ocean. Is Svalbard? Svalbard is an area with a special status, so there are many particularities here. But what is happening in Longyearbyen what? is much more what interesting. What is that thing on the left? It's the northernmost island. Animal? Svalbard is an area with a particularities here. But what Look is happening in Longyearbyen? What is that? Is that not just one of them without the, the antlers? Oh. It's a bit hideous. It looks like a pig. <laughs> yeah. It's the northernmost settlement in the world with more than 1,000 permanent residents. It's cold here too. You can observe the polar day and the polar night and you'll barely meet people over 66. And it's forbidden to die. If what? you're old or suddenly fall seriously ill and there's a danger that you won't be able to cope with the disease, you'll probably be sent to Oslo as soon as possible. Yes, ah. so that you can live out your last days there. It sounds creepy and somehow unpleasant. At the very least, if death suddenly you strikes can't get a man in the Libyan, you know. the body will be Talk removed shit. from the city. The small town cemetery stopped receiving newcomers in 1950 when it discovered that the bodies weren't decomposing. And this is a much more serious problem than it seems at first oh, glance. In 1918, the Spanish flu epidemic ravaged the city and claimed many lives. The dead were buried, but more than 30 years later, it turned out that the permafrost had preserved of their bodies. bodies. That yeah. means that a dangerous virus, oh, which God, in the 20th century the destroyed 5% of the world's population, <laughs> has also survived. Since oh, then, yeah. it's been formally forbidden to die, or rather to bury the dead in Long Yibian. However, this is not the, the people strange there. local law. Like they're all, they all live there, right? And there's only like yeah. a thousand people. Uh -huh. Do you think mm -hmm. they're all really dumb? Or? <laughs> no, I think they're quite, they're normally quite, um, because they all go out there to do research and stuff. I think they're, they're a lot of them are like scientists and stuff. I don't you think don't think like people are born there and just live there forever? I don't think so, no. Maybe there's a couple, <laughs> but I, I don't think they're not like a tribe out there that just like <laughs> eat rocks and shit. I don't, <laughs> eat rocks. Eat, what tribes do you know that eat rocks, bro? I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> There's a ban on cats too. There's restrictions on the amount of alcohol, and there's a requirement that anyone who goes out on the street carries a rifle. What? Polar bears what? often come to visit. Uh, Witchcraft. Yeah. The times of the Inquisition are long gone, but Canada still prohibits witchcraft. Okay, <laughs> not exactly doing witchcraft, but pretending to do witchcraft. Really? We don't know what sounds stranger though. Witchcraft is dealt with in Article 365 of the Criminal Code of Canada. It says that you're guilty of a crime if you do any of the following things. Pretend to cast spells, what? pretend to tell fortunes, and wait for it, pretend to find a lost object or person with the help of a cult form. Horses. So the cannon is can not watch can... Harry Potter or something. This is what I was just gonna say. But I see what I see what they, like it protects you from like the you know there's those people that like will go like these people that have like lost a relative and like be like oh I can hear them speaking yeah. to the walls and shit and take their money. I feel that and they're fair enough. But like, like I can't go on the street and just go like abracadabra. It's illegal. <laughs> Apparently I feel not. like it, I feel like it's a monetary thing, like people charging for them things. Apparently, if you're a real witch or <laughs> sorcerer and you don't film. just pretend, there's no punishment. However, oh, if you film. fake it, you can it? expect a small prison oh, sentence. Oh, it was a sick. Yeah, it was a sick film. Yeah, I completely forgot about that film. Yeah. Give me a give me a rundown. What is it? Wait, you watched a film? I know. That's why I was baffled. I, I don't know. It's like these magicians, and they do this trick. 
And then, the, and then they reveal how they did it. It's sick. It's sick. Yeah. How is Halloween celebrated in this country? Perhaps parts of this law exists to protect people from charlatans and various there psychics, go, but yeah. the fact remains. It seems that there was a proposal to lift the ban in 2018, but it didn't go any further. Going to the bathroom after 10 p.m. What? The <laughs> yes, and you can't take a shower either. This is the kind of thing that applies that to sound. old apartment buildings in Switzerland. In addition, this law is really observed, and you can be declared to the police for its violation. Wait, really? What? what is the reason for this restriction? Well, it's all because of the noise. When the water is flushed from the toilets, there's a terrible roar, which is able to wake up the neighbors who've already gone to bed. It's exactly the same story with the bath. Of course, you can take a quick shower, but you won't be able to splash about in the bathtub because when you run the bath, there's a lot of noise and it exceeds the really? time set for silence what? from 10 p.m. to 7 p.m. That must, this must only apply in like flat box, right? Because like, if you're in house, like you, surely you're not making a racket flush in a toilet. Yeah, if you got your own yard, yeah. yeah. A.m. Most often, however, I mean, it actually these are you know, local. You can't so you technically could still have a shit. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Nah, but what if it's a splashy one? Big splashy. Bro. Poop too splashy. <laughs> houses are rented. That's why there are several homeowners associations that set their own rules for tenants, so they may have this strange bathroom ban. By the way, in recent years, Swiss manufacturers of discharge valves are developing exceptionally quiet models. These toilets can be used at any time of day, even if you have very grumpy neighbors. Chewing gum. <laughs> I think I've heard of You've this one probably before. heard about this prohibition oh, like that Singapore applies in Singapore, yeah. but not only can't you chew gum there, it's also forbidden to buy or bring it into the country. Except for the special medical gum, like nicotine gum for quitters and dental gum, they can only be bought in pharmacies. Otherwise, gum is strictly forbidden, ah. and it can cost you some large fines. Why? Well, if you think about it, the reasons are quite logical. It's difficult and also expensive to scrape it off the floor, walls, bus you know seats, what? and that other Places That's where it's one I kind of agree with. It's much easier yeah, to, yeah, I can, I can to spend this, you know. money on this kind of work. It is grim. Another reason came yeah. with the opening of Nothing the subway. Nothing worse, you put your hands Shortly somewhere and it's a bit of gold. Like, oh. The hoolers found a great Ugh. way to have fun. They stick it to the sensors on the automatic doors, which of course caused them to fail. In the end, the authorities concluded that chewing gum caused more problems than benefits and banned it altogether. And it seems to work. The subway doors no longer break and you don't step on anything sticky while walking taking photographs. The Alpine villages are practically Maybe made for photographs me. and for putting them on social networks afterwards, but it's not legal everywhere. Thus, the Swiss municipality of Bergen introduced a ban on photography in 2017. Hey, Each troublemaker will be fined $5. How do you, well, you can't take a photo. Let me take a photo. So what if you take a video and then just grab a still? Is that still illegal? I don't know. What if you accidentally it? take a photo? The ban doesn't apply to citizens who photograph from their precincts, nor to wedding photos, nor to photos taken from the car you of can a passing take train. But what is the point of such a law? Please the tell answer me. is simple. It's an advertisement. It really is. According to the authors of the prohibition, scientists have shown that photographs with beautiful views make people unhappy. This statement applies to those who can't go to this place and experience positive what? emotions in reality. And Bergen is really a wonderful place place in every way, similar to the decorations Wait, of fairy so they tales. Want, so you Therefore, it's better to visit. Don't take photos because it makes people jealous and sad. No, it's, it's, it's easy not to make people so you, 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 you want to go there in person. Like, the only way to see it is in person because there's no photos of it. Is that what it is? I don't know. No, he, said it, he said it literally makes people sad. Yeah. <laughs> he said when you see somewhere that you can't go to, it makes you sad. Oh, it's dumb, right. whichever it is. Do your thing, Bergen. Do your other thing. than see photos of other people. Yes, it's very strange logic indeed. There are even signs of a ban on photography throughout the village. Did it help tourists and those who couldn't come to Bergen? Who that knows? Is bad, yeah. Traveling back in time. Or rather, it's forbidden to show films that include time travel. That law was passed what? in China in 2011. What? Representatives of the Central Bureau of Film, Radio and Television said that most of the stories in those films are fictitious and distort historical realities. Come on, who would have thought? However, the <laughs> Chinese authorities were very picky about the film's inaccuracies. In their opinion, such projects are not worth encouraging because they support superstition and almost undermine the state system. Well, who would have thought that any back to the future or X Men. All right, all right, so China, do your thing, do your thing, Interrupt China. Interrupt a wedding. 
Do you remember this technique which was often used in old movies? A heroine marries someone, and the priest says, speak now or forever hold your peace, and then the hero breaks into the church and shouts, I object. I object. He goes down the aisle to say that he really loves the heroine and, ah, how like you've done that before, Well, Toby. in South Australia, I do it's that, forbidden I don't know to do why. that, and it's no joke. It's like one of them things, I want to jump in the back of a taxi and say, follow that car. <laughs> Do you reckon they do it? Do you reckon a taxi would do that? I don't know. I don't think Depends the right taxi it. driver, the right taxi driver. Yeah, if you say please, maybe. If you're like, oh, can you just follow that car? They'll probably oh, do yeah, that, but... yeah. <laughs> it's not very dramatic. Follow though. that fucking car! <laughs> We're gonna get him! You can't interrupt a wedding or a funeral here, and the prohibition is prescribed by law. According to it, anyone who deliberately obstructs a wedding or funeral ceremony is guilty of a crime and is liable to a maximum penalty of a $10,000 fine. And in some cases, it can cost you two years of life behind bars. Jesus. The prohibition what? applies to all That's ceremonies, easy title, though, isn't it? secular and religious. <laughs> I stopped this Stopping wedding for ten thousand dollars. without gasoline. <laughs> Two years in prison. <laughs> German highways are a place where there are special rules, and they're Final quite one. unexpected. All motorways have special recreation areas. There's also an emergency lane where you can stop in case of failure. So far, everything sounds quite logical. And that's yeah. right. But if you run out of petrol on the motorway and suddenly stop, you will be fined. This is because oh. traffic on these roads is very fast, and stopping can cause Isn't a serious that similar, though, accident. Isn't that similar though, like in tunnels? You don't stuff. have any pet. Like yeah, like, yeah, you get a fine for breaking down. Not, not breaking down, but it's like stopping. And you get no, a fine for breaking down? down as well. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, on your, it's on your you for like, because you've caused a massive backlog. That ruined my day, by you know. No, no, it's not breaking down. It's running out of fuel in the tunnel. I don't think breaking is down's it? included in there. Playing with snowballs. <laughs> We guess in every country where it snows, Love kids are free to play with snowballs. Sometimes adults do too, all over the world, except in the American city of Severance in Colorado. Aww. Because here, almost a century ago, Weird this fun game was banned. It sounds like a lie, but that law really existed. It appeared in a regulation <laughs> that forbade <laughs> throwing See, stones and other things at people and their properties, such as cars. Harmless snowballs also fall under this definition. The first references to Severance date back to 1920. The ban on snowballing was almost as old as the city itself, and for many you years, no one that. even tried to change it. Fortunately, the younger generation may think differently. In October 2018, a boy named Dane Best was in an excursion in a city hall along with his classmates. The mayor began telling the school children about the strange laws. He also mentioned the snowball ban. However, the authorities never insisted on enforcing the ban. In addition, the oh, mayor of Severance least. didn't even know how to punish the offenders. Overall, the law seemed completely meaningless, death. and Dane Best decided <laughs> to fix the situation. A so nine-year-old boy collected two dozen signatures from his classmates to support him and prepared a five-minute presentation. Aww. And what were you doing when you were nine? In his time. presentation, he explained in detail why the city authority should lift the ban. The boy called the law obsolete and stressed that children <laughs> living in severance like that children kid's using the word obsolete. Yeah, have the opportunity oh to play with snowballs. And Dane succeeded. A meaningless <laughs> law that lasted a century was was abolished, and the mayor even gave the student a special snowballing device. Psst, <laughs> dude, are you looking for new technologies and great gadgets? No. Nice. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, have your minds been blown at all, boys? That's the question. Yeah, like, some of them shocked me. Yeah, the one of not being able to die, and they were like preserving the Spanish flu. That was kind of mad. That, yeah, that was kind yeah, of. Yeah, they had good reasoning though. That was kind yeah. of. Yeah. At least we know what not to do in the future. We, we can we can be on our best behaviour. No witchcraft or anything. We'll be. No witchcraft. No yeah. death.